Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And good general rule of thumb with equipment. I'm absolutely anal about this. Is you crank the equipment and you let the equipment run and warm up. I don't care if it's a weed eater, string trimmer, blower, tractor, push mower. I don't care what it is. Uh, since day one, uh, I learned that growing up, uh, you know, in a farm setting around tractors and around equipment and things like that, that metal is freezing cold. Um, I learned that uh, growing up, you always let the, the machine warm up to operating speed, uh, temperature, and I've just, it stuck with me a long time. Even during the summertime, you know, when things are hot outside and the, the metal on the machine is warmer and so when you crank it it's going to warm up a little quicker than say when it's uh i think it's 28 degrees this morning um i still do it a little bit then a little bit of warm-up time then but not like i do during the winter in the winter i will crank like this tractor it's not mine it doesn't belong to me uh, obviously i want to respect it and take care of the equipment as if it did belong to me. Uh, matter, matter of fact, even more so because it don't belong to me. Uh, James River Equipment in Danville, the John Deere dealer down there, and Matthew uh, are allowing me to you know, borrow or demo this tractor a couple of weeks uh, to get a really good feel for it. And on these cold mornings, I'm using it. It's a Saturday morning. Uh, this is a school parking lot where my kids go to school, and I'm having uh, I'm working the the driveway out here uh, so I had to do it on Saturday morning nobody's using the parking lot um, but they were letting me borrow this tractor and I crank it and I let the machine warm up to full operating temperature okay period it, it, I, I, I don't get to get going as quickly but at the end of the day uh, it's just safer it's smarter it's wiser uh, it will save you money on things breaking in the long run is when you use a piece of equipment it's this is especially true when it's cold is you let the machine or the, the motor and the hydraulics warm up to operating temperature don't just take the thing and drive off the trailer and put the rippers in the ground and start working okay that's going to be really tough on things if you do that over and over and over something might break so let your equipment warm up uh, this is my second third job with the tr3 this is the five and a half foot version uh, made by abi attachments i actually have a seven and a half foot wide uh, ordered i'm i know for a fact i'm getting a, 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 a 40 if i go john deere i'm getting a 4066 that will be the one full cab turf tires loaded to the, to the hill so a 66 horsepower will drag this thing this is a this is a 40 44 m so i'm assuming this is a 44 horsepower tractor and it has zero issues whatsoever handling this uh, five and a half foot wide matter of fact this one could probably handle the six and a half foot wide maybe even the seven seven and a half foot wide but the tractor I'm getting is 66 horsepower. So I've already ordered the seven and a half foot wide version of this, the much bigger one. And the 66 horsepower will drag that thing around like it ain't nothing. One of the things I learned yesterday from using this, and you know, this is all kind of me uh, getting familiar with a piece of equipment. Uh, in an ideal situation, you want a hydraulic top link uh, to be able to pitch the attachment back and forth that metal is freezing cold uh, you you want a hydraulic top link and to be able to control the pitch back and forth I don't have one on this tractor it's just it's just not set up for that uh, and it's part of all that learning the implement and how to make the implement as efficient as possible and and work as if it were designed to work uh, I learned a valuable lesson yesterday. I did one driveway yesterday that was 1,500 foot long, r absolutely rock hard, probably the hardest driveway I've ever been on. And these teeth on the rippers were brand new. 
This is a new set. These actually come off my ABI Force right here. So they're brand new. They've only seen dirt. But look at the difference right there. Look at how that one driveway <laughs> wore that thing down. Uh, so I called them up. Uh, fortunately, they sell the tips. They're replaceable. So you've got a, uh, it looks like 9 sixteenths. Uh, is that half inch? I think it's half inch. Uh, right there, you take that off. It looks like a grade 8 bolt, possibly. But you uh, take that off and just slide the new tooth on. Take the old one off, dispose of it. Uh, but they sell these things in a box of 50. So I called yesterday and ordered me a box. Uh, you can get 50 of them. And this particular unit has five across. So that gives me 10 wear out periods. And uh, it was much cheaper to buy them when you buy them in bulk like that. So uh, got to get this thing put on. And we'll take a look at the job out here and see where we're at see what we're looking like uh, I think to me personally uh, the most impressive thing about the TR3 not only does it do a phenomenal job uh, and anytime you buy any piece of equipment you want it to do a good job for you uh, you want it to be easy to operate uh, but you want something that it don't break, okay? And if you notice, there are no hydraulics on this. It's all manual, uh, pin style setup. You can take the wheels off and adjust them up. And look at that. I picked up a daggone nail. That's a screw in that tire right there. Gosh, it's always something. I just got the thing. <laughs> and I've already got a screw in the tire right there. Um, I don't know if run flats would be a good idea for this or not. Uh, might be, might be a suggestion I make to them. But this is a, uh, I don't know if it's got a tube in it or if it's tubeless, but it does have air in it. But I do have a screw, so I need to get that out and get that patched up. Um, I, I like the fact that there's no, uh, hydraulics. I really like that. So if something does actually break, which I think you can drop this thing out of an airplane and it's not going to break, um, you could probably go to your local welder and get them to zzz, you know weld something back up or something like that. But I just I can't see it breaking. To be honest with you, it's uh, it's built like a uh, American army tank. So um, anyway, let's go look at the. Uh, Let's go look at the uh, parking lot right here and see what we got. All right, so I'm gonna put you low to the ground right there. So hopefully you can see what I'm working with here. Uh, I wear a size 12 boot and you can see how much boot is taking up the potholes and it's quite a few of them. You can see how deep they are. Uh, this one I'm standing in is easily six inches deep. Uh, this one over here, four inches probably. Uh, here's another six inch deep, probably four or five inches deep. Uh, that's six inches right there. So uh, really a lot of digging it has to happen right here. We have to get down to the base of this pothole and cut it out, rip it out. And you can see there are potholes everywhere, all over the place. Here's some more bad ones right here. Uh, there's some more down through that way that are pretty rough. This side of the lot isn't too terribly bad, but obviously I'm gonna do the whole thing and just give it a good uniform appearance and get it slicked down. I've been measuring yards for a long time. I'm gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna say this is 30,000 square feet. I'll put the actual measurement up on the screen. So, uh, TR3 John Deere demo tractor. Let's get at it. I am going to do 
be doing a little bit more of this year is if you notice I'm on the tractor and you can hear me I've got a really good microphone set up now that I think works really well and what I mean is I'll be able to be on the equipment or the sprayer or the Ventrac or the uh, ABI or whatever and while I'm actually doing the work I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing so that you kind of uh, get an idea of what's going through my head and some of the things I say might help you become more efficient. That's the, the reasoning behind all that. actually deep enough now to where I, I can do one or two things. I can either move the tire up uh, to make the rippers go a little deeper or I can move each individual ripper. So what I'm going to do to make it a little quicker is I'm simply going to move the two tires up one notch like that. So I did that intentionally first, okay? This is kind of a getting set up to be efficient so I can do this as quickly as possible. And uh, so you can see I've done the hard part first and the longer I have the, the longer I have the TR3 in the ground, uh, the less time this job's gonna take. So by knocking that area, that corner out first, now all I have to do is keep making circles and I, every time I come by, I'm gonna catch this corner that's already done. Hopefully that makes sense the way I said that. Uh, the, the teeth here, let's take a look at them and see where they're at, see how they're wearing. You can see the point is a little bit more blunt now. I don't have a new one to compare that to, but you saw it when it was new when I put it on. So. These teeth do wear out, uh, so it's a good idea to have some spare on hand, especially when you're doing gravel driveway type work. So now I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive. And now that I've got the top of the thing ripped up, ooh, that one's not ain't bent. I thought I bent it, but it's not. I'm gonna go to the lowest notch it'll possibly go so I can maximize my depth. And then I'm also gonna take the tires up another notch. So she's really gonna be digging now. And on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and release the box blade and let it down so that I can begin uh, filling in the low spots. So as I'm cutting steel, as I'm ripping with the rippers, I'll also be uh, you know, cutting high spots, filling in low spots, all that kind of thing. And I said this in another video, but if you own one of these or any tractor implement, especially if it's made like this ABI, man, be super careful with where you put your fingers because this stuff is heavy, heavy duty. I mean, heavy duty. And the last thing I don't see happen is you get your fingers stuck in there and cut your finger off. That wouldn't feel good, I don't think. I'm gonna take this wheel, move it up a notch, pin is back in. Again, this is gonna maximize my depth as I'm ripping and with the box blade down. I'm, I'm doing two things, killing two birds at once, with one stone. I'm, I'm slicking it down, smoothing it, Dragging material to the low spots, cutting the high spots off, all while I'm chopping it up. Alright, so right here is where the pavement meets the gravel. And before, it was a, a good sized drop off right there. Well, I'm dragging material up flush with the edge of the pavement. 
That way when I do my final pass, all this will be level with each other. I want it even. I don't want, to, I don't want any type of uh, drop off or undulation or change of grade when it goes from the asphalt to the rock. So I'm, I'm pulling me something up here to work with when I get to that point. Now I got two different ways I can do this. Is one, I can take the front part of my bucket, like this right here, use it in close mode, and drag back as you get right here, start tilting it over. And if the material is good and loose, that's going to work well. In this case, it's rock, so I'm going to keep the, the cutting edge of my bucket level with or flat with the uh, asphalt will put just a little bit of down pressure. Look, look at that. Just to touch the down pressure and back drag it. And look how smooth that is. Watch my tire as I go back over here. Watch the transition. See the transition from asphalt to rock? There isn't one. It's all flat and flush. All right, so I've got it ripped up pretty good, but I want to show you something that I want to try. And in order for me to try it, I have to take these, the ripping teeth off. And of course, I was told by ABI, don't do this. <laughs> Well, you know, that's kind of like telling the wind not to blow. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm that guy that when you say, hey, you probably shouldn't do that, probably shouldn't try that, you know, as far as equipment goes, that kind of thing. I'm gonna be that dude that says, hey, hold my sun drop and watch this. This is the profile blade. And it goes in the end right there and put your pins back in there just like you would with the regular cutting teeth now dirt applications this ain't a big deal i mean especially if it's a little bit you know the, the ground's loose already but rock uh this thing isn't completely intended to cut rock but i want to show you why i want to try it all right so let's look right here at this ridge and you can see uh, that that's good and loose right there. All right, let me rake this off a little bit like this. You can still see a little bit of a hump right here. I don't know that you're really gonna be able to see this on camera. I'm gonna do my best I can do to show you. It's actually more prevalent right here. See this hump with the two ripping teeth road right here. That's kind of the, the aisle or the, the lane they took. In order to cut this little bit of a hump out, you would have to stagger it, okay? So that you're cutting teeth through right here. Well, what happens when the ground is hard or when the rock is hard? You might get the teeth lined up right here, but the implement tends to slide down and fit in those grooves and the teeth tend to keep riding in the grooves. Now, if this was soft ground, like dirt when you rip here all of this in between is going to be broken up anyway it's not a big deal this is only in uh super hard compacted uh situations i i would probably go as far as to say only in a rock driveway or or a gr gravel parking lot situations that thing rides in that groove right there those those two uh the the rippers tend to ride in the grooves a little bit obviously you can come and cross it up and hit it from a different direction and probably bust this hump up but i just want to attempt and try the profile blade because that's going to get i'm not going super deep with it all i want to do is remove this hump and here's why the first driveway i did i did it it rained really good two or three days after and once it settled you could actually see a little bit of that ridge left over. I don't like that. I actually went back and redid that driveway uh, at no cost because uh, I just didn't like that. 
Um, that was operator error. Learning the machine had nothing in the world to do with the implement. Had everything to do with me uh, not uh, working the, the, the area uh, a, a little bit more. Working it more to be able to cut that ridge out. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to try the profile blade just to see if it'll rip that, you know, these little humps or these little ridges out that are under the loosened material. So you can see I got a loosened rock up here all day long, but I, I want to go up under it just a little bit so that when it rains and it settles, you know, the, the fines of the dust in here settles down, I'm not left with little ridges. And, you know, riding on it, you really can't feel them. But visually, I don't like it. So I'm, I'm gonna test this out, try it out, and see what happens. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, absolutely phenomenal, amazing. Look at that. That is why I wanted to try that out. You, you can see I'm not going any deeper. So I'm not putting any added stress or strain on the implement or the tractor. But I'm simply cutting out that little tiny hump that was up under there. But look at that. See, look how nice and flat and smooth that is now. Oh my goodness. Okay, I got to get with it. I got to run over the entire parking lot one more time now let me let me say this i was told not to do this okay y'all know i'm the guy who likes to just test things and see what's going to happen so in no way shape form or fashion am i recommending you try this with your tr3 you need to take that up with abi uh, if you decide that's something you want to do uh, you're doing it at your own risk uh, again the profile blade uh, is, is made to work in the dirt but in this situation i've gotten this rock busted up so good that i don't think it's any danger to the implement or to the tractor or to the operator or to the surface it's only going to make the job look and be better at the end of the day so let's get with it all right so we got the uh tr3 set up uh, for the final pass we're about to wrap this up and you can see I've got all my contact points touching at one time. Got the box blade up under here, which is catching material, cutting high spots, filling low spots. I've got the profile blade barely in the ground. You can see it's on the high setting. So it's just barely helping to level and cut and keep material loosely spread. And then of course you can see the comb. I've got it anchored in the ground in the back to leave that butter smooth finish. I hate to recommend you run a piece of equipment fast, but the finish grade when I'm using the TR3, uh, it's almost, you can't, yes, you can't go too fast, okay? You can be unsafe, but if you have a little bit of speed behind you, uh, on this tractor I'm running around the eight mile an hour uh, range, uh, you eliminate these see the little ridges right there. I created those because I pulled up really really slow To get it set up to show you in the video what it looks like, but when you're going fast all that's just butter smooth And then of course the main part of all this is your tires right there They kind of set the level of grade uh, nothing's going to go below the tires, and of course the tires aren't going to magically pop up off the ground unless you're going too fast, that is. But that kind of keeps everything on an even plane so that you get this nice, smooth, buttery, smooth as a baby's butt finish. This is my favorite part. You can see I've got it ripped up some kind of good. It is very loose. So now I'm just going to start riding, have a good time, put my headphones on. I'm going to get a little praise and worship going on. And I'm going to have me a good time right here when I slick this down. Then i got a birthday party to go to. Now back 
over here where the pavement meets the gravel. Look at that. It's literally that easy. See, I got this one little section left to uh, slick down. So I'm gonna kind of drop right here, get up a little speed. And as I get out there to my finished product, I'm gonna ease the three point hitch up and just kind of feather it out. so this right here is the part that I absolutely love I get to take a second glance over my work check it out kind of this is the kind of the satisfaction part of it that uh, I can go to the office Monday and I can invoice this customer and I am confident and positive that I have offered uh, well, I've completed a superior service, okay, an elite service that it has been done to the absolute best of my ability, uh, where my integrity uh, as a person and, and as a company stays intact as the way that lines up with business. And you can look at it and it is it is absolutely transformed this area. Uh, all the potholes over there completely eliminated potholes over here eliminated there were some high and low spots some kind of undulated areas out here all that's gone I couldn't be more pleased I mean this that stinking TR3 is flipping bad to the bone it is absolutely bad to the bone I'm excited to get my new tractor uh, I'm excited to get my bigger TR3. Uh, let's see, time. We forgot to look at that. All right, it's, it's 1230 on the dot. So we got here 930, uh, 1030, 1130, 12, 1230. That's three hours. You've got to take out roughly, I'm going to be real conservative when I say this, an hour. That's going to be for the standing around talking to you. Uh, that's going to be setting up cameras, moving cameras positioning the GoPro on the TR3 in different ways, taking the camera, adjusting the, everything that has to do with the filming, turning it on and off, make it, making, sure, making sure all the speakers are working and all that. I'm gonna say a minimum an hour, but we'll, we'll just, we'll call it an hour. So two hours, uh, again, I'm thinking this is about 30,000 square feet, but I, I'm gonna stick it on the screen so you can see an exact, and uh, two hours that's a big deal and for what what we charge to do this service is uh that's extremely good money for a business owner talking about that if you're interested you better be subscribed to my channel uh you you better be on my email list all that's in the description below gci turf pro been working super hard on that and, and kind of a overarching view of what that's going to look like to you business owners or, or somebody that wants to start a business i've decided to put it all out there on how I actually run the business. The nuts and bolts, sitting behind the computer, uh, the numbers, uh, the margins, 
the overhead, how I figure all that out, uh, or, or excuse me, let me reword that, how I figured that out almost 20 years ago, and I've had that same structure and that same systematic approach uh, to the business side of business, I've been doing it pretty much since day one, and it works. It's, it's on a, a platform totally completely different than YouTube, but once I get everything dialed in and finalized, uh, and, and everything's running smoothly. Obviously, I'm gonna announce it and tell you about it here on YouTube and in my email list. So, I'm going to birthday party. The triplets are one years old. Can you believe it? The those little babies are a year old. I am so proud of my brother and my, my, uh, my sister-in-law. They have absolutely knocked this out of the park. Um, Raising three kids at one time, feeding all of them at one time, changing diapers at one time, three of them. I mean, I got three, but it was at three different times. Uh, you know, they're spread out. But um, uh, the Lord decided to bless them with three at one time. And uh, man, I cannot tell you how proud I am of my brother and his wife, uh, the way they have, uh, they've really tackled this and really, really got a good grip on it. So, we're going to celebrate in the name of Jesus uh, these triplets being one years old, and that's just going to be a really good time. So, as always, uh, job well done, and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.